today, we discuss how to help your kids when their friends turn to meanies or bullies. Welcome to Empowered Kids TV Village Talk. I am so excited to have you here. You're here because you know that every family has the potential to be great and you're willing to push the boundaries of your mindset so that you can create the family of your dreams. Today on Village Talk, we welcome a very, very special coach. It's Carol Downing. Carol, welcome to the village. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. And I just want to share a little bit about your work with all of our villagers so that they can get to know you a bit more. Carol is a certified parenting coach who is committed to supporting parents and bringing alive a sense of joy and deep connection with their children. With a background in both nursing and psychology, she combines her professional and personal experience to assist clients in navigating challenges by embracing the process of growth and transformation. Carol is also certified as a life re-entry practitioner and specializes in working with parents who have lost a spouse or are transitioning to single parenting after divorce. She loves working with parents and believes that everyone has the capacity to experience the qualities of balance, peace, and playfulness in their parenting. You can dive deeper into Carol's work at cmdowning.com and I'll leave a link down below in the description so you can find Carol's work very easily. Carol, let's get into today's question. Wonderful, yeah. So today's question comes from Marissa and Marissa writes, my son has until recently been friends with a boy who has now begun to bully him. The main topic of his bullying is my physical disability. That's heart wrenching. The boy is making jokes about me. I'm afraid I didn't handle the situation very well. I went to the boy's house and actually got quite cross with the mom. However, by the end of the conversation, I found myself accepting this boy's behavior because he's been having a rough time with children picking on him. According to his mom, and this is why he lashes out at my son. I feel like I've caused him to be bullied, handled it terribly, and now may have made it even worse. I really don't know what to do now. Any advice? That's a tough one, Carol. Yeah, there's so many different layers in yeah. that question. Um, you know, but the first thing that really stands out to me is I love how Marissa has the, like the first thing she saw was compassion yes. for the child that was bullying her son. And I think that that speaks so much to her parenting. Mm -hmm that she can see what's underneath the behavior. Yes. And, you know, I truly believe that every behavior that's happening is a message that's trying to come through. Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah, and I think the other thing that I really see in that question too is, um, you know, hoping that she also has some compassion for herself because I feel like she, you know, felt like she didn't handle it perfectly to yes. be pressed with the mom. And I think it's very natural for all of us to, want to protect our children and we you know sometimes that comes up as being cross or angry and really looking at if she had it to do over what would she Indeed. want to do how would she want that to go it's so easy for us carol to be so compassionate to others like you said marissa was really good in recognizing that hurt people hurt people so she could bring that compassion to this little boy who was actually bullying her son but it's so often we find it difficult to turn that com push, that compassion towards ourselves, and to say, okay, I didn't get this right, but it's okay. Yeah, we're all okay. And I think that's a great point because especially as moms, we can, we can miss that self-compassion piece so quickly. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so quickly. I think it's the, you know, the first place that I always work with parents to go is how do we have self-empathy before mm -hmm. we work with what's happening right in front of us. Yeah. Um, you know, and in that too, you know, there's so many questions for me that I would love to explore about, you know, how her son feels about her disability or what are there triggers for her around that? Um, like, was she bullied as a child? You know, and I, you know, there's not a clear description of what the um, disability is, but having a clear conversation with her son about how is that for him? How does he experience it? so that they can begin to journey together with what does that mean for them as a family and you know creating 
just a if safe space for her son to talk about that yeah. as well when he feels triggered by that bullying. Mm. And I think this is tough because sometimes it's easier, uh, not nicer, but easier to manage bullying when it's directed at you. But when it's directed at a loved one, especially someone that you protect, and if, if this son has a protective relationship because his mom does have a disability, it can make it all that worse. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that he, that it, there may be a sense of him trying to protect her. And, yes. you know, the boy who's bullying him is, is picking up on that, you know, yes. in some way. Um, so I think having, a, having some clarity and, and opening and getting curious with him and with herself about what triggers are there around that disability so that when they encounter that in life, which sadly um, is happens in society and to have that sense of how do we react how do we respond um, to that behavior and not saying that even though that there's so much compassion for the boy and like you said people who are hurt they lash out at other people and so that compassion is so well placed and also understanding and knowing that it's okay to set a limit about you know bullying isn't okay and working with the mom and and hopefully the boy and that they were friends once so is there a ground with which they can meet and reconnect at that place of friendship yes Mm -hmm. and i think she's she's made the first step albeit not in the way she wanted to when she went over to speak to the mom but she has made the first step and i think if she's able to first turn that compassion in and then open the dialogue back in in a softer more gentle how can we work this out um little boys especially are happy to kind of move on from incidents and try to find their way back to friendship quite quickly so much better than us right yes so much better than we are when you when we talk about bullying one of the things that i i like to talk to parents about is really building that resilience because you touched on it um we live in a society sadly where we're, we're very judgmental of each other and, and bullying exists. Um, and, and there's, while she might be able to, to deal with this one incident, it doesn't prevent another child from making comments or from bullying her son for the, for the same reason. So as parents, what, what do you think she can do? What can Marissa really do to kind of build the resilience in her own son? Um, within their, even within their family, looking at herself as well, so that when this comes up again, if ever, God forbid, they're able to look at it in a different way, from a stronger, more connected place. Right, right. That's such a good question. I think it speaks to having the awareness, like you began with, of saying that she didn't handle it the way she wanted, yes. you know, but even starting and stepping back and, and having the open conversation with her son and saying, I think the kind of to step back even more the biggest thing we can do as parents is to say to our children you know I didn't handle that Mm. the way that I would have liked to I reacted like acknowledging reaction acknowledging we often don't um, in the moment respond the way that we want to so opening that conversation with her son and then saying you know how can we how does it feel when we're bullied what Mm. sore points does it touch on so that there's an ability to understand the feelings Mm -hmm. and what comes up from underneath that. When he experiences being bullied, does he feel separate? Does he feel Mm -hmm. um, like he doesn't fit in? You know, what are those feelings coming up? And then building that resilience, What once we know what feelings are being touched underneath, Mm -hmm. then we can build resilience in, so if that happens, what can we do to remind ourselves what's true? Mm. Um, and uh, having as a family a conversation about what is true for our family because there's so many differences like the you know the families that I work with they're often one parent families or they're co-parenting and that sense of that families look different um, at times and so acknowledging those differences and being okay inside of ourselves so that we can respond rather than react okay I think we've got quite a few great tips here from Marissa and I'd just like to kind of reiterate because we're all about action when we get to village talk so really just that the things that we've touched on so far for marissa is first of all turn that compassion inward yeah recognize okay this is not the way i wanted to handle it i would have liked it to have gone completely differently it didn't and that's okay yeah i i did my best in the moment and i can pick up from here and try again Uh, and really just lay on a little bit of self-love i love the opportunity to open the dialogue both with herself to see where this might be triggering her 
and then with her son because i think it's important to recognize our own triggers because sometimes our kids feed off of our triggers um so it's really important for her to also recognize what this might be bringing up for her i love the way you talked about talking through the conversation with her son in terms of acknowledging how he feels and what it mm. might be bringing up for him but most importantly talking about what can we put in place together to remind ourselves who we really are yeah we're an awesome family you know i'm awesome i know i'm awesome what can we do in those moments to remind ourselves and for me that's really really powerful and i also love that we're saying go back and try again to have that conversation with the mom try to repair the relationship and see if you can give these boys a chance to rebuild their friendship so that the the in, the tension and the incidents that are happening in school can dissipate and and is there anything else you'd like to add carol that we can give to marissa Well, you know, just that one thing that you know to tag on to the idea of going back and and trying to repair the relationship. That you know, such a great example for the boys. Mm. You know, something didn't go as we planned, and then we, when we're when we've kind of settled down a little bit, when we've had a moment, then we can re-enter in a place of response, and that shows them again how do we work with one another in a way that we can try again, that we can forgive, um, and as you said before, remember who we are. I love it. These boys, you know, yes. they remember who they are as friends. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Carol, and for sharing all your wisdom. Yeah, such a pleasure. Thank you very much. I just want to remind everybody to really dive deeply into Carol's work because you'll be amazed by the shift in your parenting paradigm that you leave with. You can find Carol at cmdowning.com and the link will be left below. Thank you for joining us for this episode. We're all about sharing and support in this village. So if you found value in this episode, be sure to share it with your family and friends. And remember, this is a weekly show. So if you haven't already, subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified of our next episode. As we always say in the village, you're just one connection away. With love and gratitude empowers. Until next time. <laughs>